All right, now I'm going to show you how to create a form and how you can use it. It's actually pretty simple. So again, I'm going to go ahead and open up that in-service folder that I've created just so I can keep everything in here. Once I've got the in-service in folder open, I'm going to create, and now I'm going to create a form. Creating forms are very, actually very simple. Sometimes the hardest part is going to be on how you're going to customize it, how you're going to use it. So I'm going to say in-service example. I always give it a title and then pick your theme. If you don't like the theme, don't worry, you can go back and change it. The kids laugh at me because I have a tendency to, I love this pink and black one. I love the birds and I love the, the poppies. Let's just go ahead and pick poppies. All right, so here is where you put your directions. So this was today we will be doing an exit survey about color theory. Make sure you submit this before noon Saturday. And then I can say blah, 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 day. All right. So then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put a question. Now, we're going to see if this works. I haven't done it yet. I've only seen it online because supposedly what they've done is if you have got like pre-made tests, questions, etc. you want to use, supposedly we can simply copy and paste these in. So I'm going to see if it'll let us do that. So I've copied it and I'm going to try pasting it. Well, let me do the four by four down here. Ah, and it did. Excellent. So what that means is I can put my question here and I can highlight copy paste and I can paste my options here. So that'll save you a lot of work. It used to be you had to type everything in individually. Now I've got it as a multiple choice. I could also make this one choose from a list if I wanted, but I'll just leave this as multiple choice right now. And I'm going to tell it to be required because I want to make sure they answer it. So I'm going to say done. Now I'm going to add another item and I'll make this one multiple choice also. I'll do choose from a list. And so now I got what color is primary. So that's the question. And then here are the color options. So I just simply control C. I'm just copying it. And automatically drops it in. And require question done. Now this would be great. That's all I was trying to do. Because remember, I do not personally use these for tests. I use these for exit surveys. I use these for check for understandings. I use these for what I would typically call the worksheets because face it, when we were doing a worksheet, you were just seeing was the student doing their reading assignment where they doing some of their background information. It is not some big major assignment that is really wonderful, lots of work. That's not what they're supposed to be. It's supposed to be like a warm up. It's supposed to be something that gets the kids going. It's supposed to be a check. That's all it's supposed to be, right? So that's how I use it. I use it as a check for understanding. If it's something I want to discuss, I'll have them go through and submit it. I'll look at it and I'll grade it because I'm looking for a completion grade and they know this. So my students are not afraid to be honest. They will go in and actually put in what they learn, what they think, because I am look, I want the honesty. Because if they get it all wrong or only miss one or two get it wrong, I can help those one or two. Or if I see the whole class has got an issue, I can do it without everybody knowing who said what. Or I may go through and I may copy some of their responses and I'll paste it into a document and we'll pull it up and we'll discuss it. And we'll go, well, why do you think that they thought it was this? Well, could you see that? Well, what would be a better way? How can we teach this so that they don't make that mistake again? Or what do you think about, but without a student's name? So that takes away that whole fear factor because nobody's going to recognize their handwriting because it's not on a little sticky note. Nobody's going to know who it is unless they say. They're, they're, it, 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 it's a very freeing feeling for students usually to be able to go through and not have to worry about anybody seeing it but the teacher and they will know I'm not going to go through and judge them. I'm not going to go through and say okay because you got the answer wrong you lose 10 points or 20 points. For me this is are you doing the assignment? It's a spot for me to check to see where they're at. If they're off and they're wrong others are working and they're ones that are working and they're working on the project. I can sit down with that student and work with them on that concept just a little quick. I can pull them together and say, hey, okay, let's do this. And it's great. All right. Now I do like to, however, like to know who it's coming from. So I always tell mine last and first because I want to know who they are and I'll leave it at a text and it's required. And, oh goodness. And it's in the wrong place. Don't panic. You just drag it and drop it where it wants to go. Put that down there wherever I want it. I also like to add from a list. Um, 
class are you in? And then so forth. And I, I have so many different classes, I actually have to put the name of the class and what period it's in for the kids to understand. Just reorder it and we go through. And normally, most of mine really and truly, they're usually only like maybe five questions long. I, I've heard of a lot of teachers have used these for like reading assignments. And so they want the students to, by Wednesday, you're supposed to have read a chapter, blah, blah, blah. And so what they'll do is they'll go through and they'll pull out some questions, maybe from the chapter questions, you know, they're in the back, or maybe it'd be a simple vocabulary. You know, there's different things you could do and say, okay, tell me, what did you learn about X, Y, Z? And have the students put it in and say, this is due before class to start a class on Monday or Thursday because we're going to be discussing it in class or you're going to be going and you're going to be creating an Animoto video over the different vocabulary words. It's just to get the students students thinking, get them understanding, getting them to do their homework, getting them to do the pre-work. I don't even really give homework anymore and the kids drive the kids crazy because the first thing that I tell them is, is you don't have homework in my class so they all cheer. I said but what you will have you'll have pre-work and they're all oh, when they realize they have to do the pre-work before we come in and it's great. It's wonderful. Okay now we're going to assume we're completely done, so let's go look at our form. And remember, you can add more items. There's different ways to do section header, page breaks, grids, skills, etc. So depending on whatever question you want to ask, you can add those items in. You can delete. You click on it and it edits it. You can duplicate, so maybe you want to use the same questions over and over again. You have lots of different options. I almost forgot to show you this one. I like to use the show link. I don't like to, I don't like to show the results. I don't want other people seeing it typically because again I'm using it for an exit ticket because I just want to check for understanding. You may have you may be doing like a mock poll in class and you want people to see okay and you're doing it completely anonymous so there's no names so they don't know who it is and they voted red and this one blue and this green you might want to show then but for me I usually just do regular show link. Um, thank you for doing your work. And that's all it takes. Now, let's see, send form. And here's your option. So now that I have my form done, <coughs> I can save it here on the social networks. I can embed it. So if I'm comfortable with embedding on websites, I can do that. And yes, you can change the size. I can copy and paste, put that in. I usually just copy and paste the URL. So I have my control C URL. And now I'm going to give this to the students to do. Now imagine this is the assignment I want them to give and I've got to write that big long extended URL on my board. Not going to work so well, right? Let's face it, if you somebody gave you that and told you you had to go do it for an assignment, you would pretty much say, hey, I'm not doing it because it's too much to go there. So what I'm going to do instead is we're going to use a Google shortener and you can use any URL shortener you prefer. In my class we just use the Googly or the Googly, the kids different call it, this is the Google URL shortener. I'm logged in so it'll be saved. Hit paste and I hit shorten URL. It automatically pulls up the shorten URL. I get a little preview of it here. So now when I open me a new and I paste, that little one goes right in. So it's much easier for a student to go through and simply type in the shorten URL to get to it. And as long as keyword as long as you don't delete it and start all over again that URL will never change as long as you're logged in. So I'm logged in so it's saved and you can see I have a lot of short URLs sorry <laughs> because it's a lot easier for me to share this with students by putting it up on the overhead writing on the board putting it on a piece of paper and saying by the end of this week make sure you've gone to and completed. There's many different things you could do. You could say for the whole you know whole grading period you know you're going to do a progress check on their reading, reading and you want to see how far they've gotten their reading. And you can say, okay, by the end of week one, you're supposed to have read chapter one and two, three, four, whatever book you're reading. And you could have space, just basic questions in there asking the students what's going on. I've heard of a couple of teachers that have been so much as evil as to say on page 10, chapter blah, um, paragraph five, what's the second word or who's speaking in that paragraph. There's different things you can do. It's all about how creative you want to be. Now, if you got a visual person, some people are visual like me, if I click on details, 
It's a little bit more, so it gives you the total number of clicks, how many times this has been clicked on and answered. You still have your shortened URL, and now you also have a QR code. So here, you could copy the image and you could paste it into a Word document that you give to them, or you could put it on your website. You could also save the image and save it and download it, but my advice is do not just save it as a general QR code. I would save it to, um, this one would be in-service QR. So make sure you're giving it a name. Don't just randomly save it in a different place. Don't just save it as a chart because you'll get very confused when you go looking for it. And that's how you can share your assignments that you create with the students. Makes it much easier to share. Now, I'm going to show you what happens if we have gone in. And I want to see the students that put their work in. So last comma first, third, green, Smith. Thank you. Yay, you did it. I'm open in my Google Drive. So here's my in-service example inside my Google Drive. And I have one response. And I want to click on it. Well, I need to see the view response. When you click on view responses, it should pull up an option. Well, it's not going to ask mine because I have it set up. But it'll ask you, do you want to see it as a an Excel file or always pull it up as an Excel file. I have mine set up to always pull it up as an Excel file because I want to be able to see what's going on. So here's my responses. So I'm going to pretend now. I'm going to pretend I'm somebody else. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah. Here, I'm done. Now I have two responses, right? View my responses. There's my responses. So as I'm going, putting it in here, okay, boom, 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 all right, yay, okay. Oh, look, I need to move it over. And you can do different things you can put in here. So I'm just looking to Joey's put, there it is. And my favorite, again, is the timestamp. Because, again, if I put it like a midnight curfew, it'd be done. It's tamping it right there, and I've got it. Ha, ha, ha. Makes things a little easier. going to pull up, click on the responses, view responses, there they are. You can also click on or de-click on the accepting responses and they can no longer put it in. So if you do have that midnight re rule and you no longer to be able to do it, you click right there and put it in there. You can unlink the form, you can get, there's different things you can do. Most people just simply need a basic form that they can share with others. Again, I can go in until accepting responses. Now they can put more in. I can view responses and go check and see. The parents won't be able to see what they're put instead of put in unless they're standing over their shoulder while they're doing it. The only person that's going to see who put what is you and anybody on your team if you shared it with the people on your team. So just go through. And again, these are not usually test questions. These are simple tech check for understandings exit surveys because I know when I did exit surveys on the traditional sticky notes even though I would take them and put them specifically on that class's attendance form that I kept in my grade book I'd still lose them or if I had them on the little sheets of paper oh my gosh would I lose them or the students would drop them on their way out this way I know the students are doing it because they're clicking it and they're submitting it they're doing it in class they can do it on their smartphone they can go home and do it for homework in my class we do them on the computers because everybody has a computer or in a one-to-one -one environment. It's all going to depend on how you want to incorporate it. Now, if you're not sure how you want to still incorporate using Google Forms and you want a little, you know, sit down one-to-one, -one, I'm more than willing to sit down with you and help you go through it. The last thing I'm going to show you before I leave is make sure, for the love of God, when you get done, sign out. Don't ever leave your account open and active. Please, for the love of God, make sure you sign out. All right. All right. Congratulations. Let's go have some fun making some Google Forms.